story tonight by Ron Evans is entitled River of Evil. Good night. 
Oh, the feeling we're in for a long downpour. Yeah. Well, I reckon I'll go and dream about all that gold. Good night. Jock Cameron quickly fell asleep in spite of the heavy rain outside. He didn't see the dark figure enter his tent, carefully fold tightly the blanket lying by his feet and move into a position by his head. Then suddenly he stirred and sensed he was not alone. Uh, oh, who is it? What do you want? Anything else he had to say was cut off when the blanket was forced down over his face. No, 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 the morning dawned dull and damp. The rain had stopped, but the dry ground of the previous day was now thick mud. Tommy Miller pulled back the flap of Jock's tent. Hey, Jock, Tommy, you're up and about. Do you hear me? Hey, Jock, come on, man. We're moving off soon. You know, you devil. What's the matter, Tommy? The old coot wanted to lie in? That bad. He's dead. Dead? No, he can't be. Well, he's not breathing. Here, let me take a look at him. The excitement over the last two days must have been too much for him. Yeah. Yeah, he's dead. And stone cold. Must have gone during the night. Poor old devil. He spent his life looking for gold, and look what happened. Uh, I guess he had a weak heart. Pity he didn't tell us he had a weak heart. We could have given him lighter work to do. Well, I'll go and give the others the bad news. They can help us dig a grave. We don't even know his real name. Probably find it amongst his effects, though. It, wouldn't it be better if we took the body into Pilgrim's Rest? His death will have to be reported. Oh, why bother, Tom? The folks here might start asking awkward questions, and there'll be an inquiry, maybe. After all, who else knows he's in the Transvaal except us? That's true, Matt. But look, look, we can give him a decent burial here, and then we'd have no need to worry any more about it. Look, I reckon that's the way the jock would have preferred it anyway. You're right, I suppose. It'd save us a lot of time and trouble. Yeah, well, come on, then. Let's go and tell the others. Jock Cameron was buried on a hillside facing away from the river. They packed up the camp and rode upriver to a drift. When Matt tried to cross, he was nearly swept away by the flood. So it was decided to set up camp on some higher ground until the water subsided and it was safe to cross. Martha Hendricks began to prepare supper and asked Matt to go down to the river for water. Equipped with a large pot, he left to do the chore and did not return. Tommy, will you go and see what Matt's doing? He went for water at least half an hour ago. Oh, I'll go with you. Need to stretch my legs some. How long do you think the river's going to be in flood like this? Oh, if it don't rain, I'd say we can safely cross in the morning. Can you see him, Tubby? No. He can't be far away, though. Matt! Matt! Oh, well. Let's both try. Matt! Tommy, what's that further downstream there? Look, you see it? Where? I can't see anything except... Oh, yeah. Now, you mean that brown thing? It's a hat. Just at the water's edge. Hey, it, it's Matt's hat. Can you reach it? Uh, yeah. Uh, here it is. It, it's all wet. It's been in the water and washed back onto the bank here. A Yankee fool gone and fallen in by the look of it. Well, unless he's an exceptional swimmer, that's the end of Matt Ludlow. Even a good swimmer stands little chance in that torrent. He'll have been smashed to a pulp by the rocks down there. Two deaths in one day. I don't like it. It's as though that gold we found is jinxed. Their companions in camp were horrified when they were told of Matt's death. A gloom descended.
attended on them as they watched Martha cook dinner. The evening sun glowed redly, making the flames of the campfire appear to be non-existent. As Martha put the food out, each of them took his plate and ate hungrily. Mm. Yeah, I hope we can get across that darned river in the morning. Mm. You see those clouds to the south? Mm. It could rain again. Uh, why are you always looking at the black side of life, huh? Uh, that way, I'm never disappointed. But very often, pleasantly surprised. I think if you smiled, the hillside would crumble. Oh, please don't <laughs> bake her. It's been a day of tragedy, and we're all feeling edgy, I know. I try to be cheerful, even if it has to be forced. Martha's right. Tomorrow, we've got a bright new world to face. Oh, 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 my throat. What's wrong, Oz? <laughs> You all right? I thought my chest. That was fire. Captain, Captain Charlie, he's in a boat. Easy, Charlie, easy, easy. Yeah, it's my turn. Help me lay him down, Tommy. What, what's wrong with him then? The fit? By his convulsions, I'd, I'd say yes. Or poisoned. Oh, it must be an epileptic fit. Is, is there nothing we can do to ease him? I don't know. Get me some water, Martha. Okay. Oh, the fit must have passed. Ah, oh, he's dead. No, he can't be. He's dead, you say? Yes, dead. It's cursed. The gold's cursed. Four men dead. Do you realize that? Four men. Four men? My poor husband. Have you forgotten him? I tell you, the very ground we stand on is cursed! Martha Hendricks went early to her tent. It had taken them a long time to calm her down. Tommy and Tubby found a piece of soft ground and silently buried their companion. For a while, they stared across the campfire, lost in thought and with little to say. Don't know about you, Tubby, but I'm not superstitious. And I am. I've seen some strange things in my time. You do well to respect it. Respect what? The supernatural. There's a jinx on us, Tommy. How else can these deaths be explained? Oh, I don't know. But there must be some rational explanation. Well, you won't find one. I'm scared to my back teeth. No, so am I. But it ain't ghosts, banshees, and poltergeists I'm scared of. This is Africa, Tommy. It's a strange country, and we just don't know. Now, you're letting your mind run wild. Uh, since we left Mozambique, we haven't seen another living person other than Martha and Matt. Doesn't it strike you as odd? Yeah, I'll admit to that. But then I heard that there isn't much of a native population in this region. Yeah, that's right, boyo. But why? It seems like good land. It's fertile. Uh, maybe Martha's right. There's a curse on it. <laughs> Nonsense. You've been reading too many books. Yes, you can laugh. I just hope we're alive in the morning so we can cross the river. Yeah, yeah that's right. And when we're crossing, I'll remind you about this stupid conversation. Oh, we'll see. I'm going to sleep. And sleep well. I'll call you at first light. Oh, I'm looking forward to it. Sleep with your revolver in one hand. Maybe it'll scare away those ghosts of yours. I <laughs> don't think that's funny. Then he put a load of wood onto them, enough to keep the fire alight until morning. Inside his small tent, he lighted his hurricane lamp and started to undress. In spite of what he had said to Tubby Mackerson, he had a vague, undefinable sense of foreboding. It was true that Tubby was older, more world-wise. Taking his own advice, he lay back and looked up at the top of the tent, a revolver in his hand. His mind started to drift into sleep. <laughs> Tommy
Tommy's eyes flickered open, and he sat up, instantly alert. Then, still clutching his gun, he ran out. He looked quickly around him in the soft light from the campfire. The flap of Martha's tent opened, and she looked out. What was that shot? Did you fire it? No, I was asleep. Tommy! Better go and take a look. He's got his lantern on. Tommy, are you there? Tommy, are you... Oh, what's the matter? Oh, no. Oh, he's... He's dead. <gasps> the right side of his face has been blown away. Oh, how awful. Look, he... He's got a gun in his hand. He... He could have done it by accident in his sleep. Or committed suicide. No. Oh, no, not Tubby. He liked life too much for that. Here, let me see this gun. Well, what are you doing? This gun hasn't been fired. But it must have been. No. It's fully loaded, Martha. Can't be. Here, let me take a look. No. I'll take this. You know what this means? What? You killed him. Is that why you're pointing those guns at me? Tubby was my best friend, Martha. And one of us murdered him, right? Now I know it wasn't me. And that only leaves you. Why? You're crazy. How could I have done it? You saw me coming out of my tent. That doesn't mean a thing. You could have dodged into it just before I came out of mine. No, Tommy, you're wrong. Why would I want to kill Tubby? I liked him. That's what I'd like to know. Maybe you want this gold all for yourself. Maybe you were planning to kill me next. I swear I didn't kill Tubby. Please believe me, Tommy, please. How can I believe you? There's only the two of us here. Who else could have fired the shot? I don't know. I don't know. I, I tell you, this place is jinxed. I don't think the gold commissioner in Pilgrim's Rest is going to believe that. You're going to hand me over. It, it, it's your word against mine, then. That's right, Martha. I suppose you killed the others, too. How could I? I'm only a woman. How could I suffocate a big man like... No. Jock was suffocated, was he? Yeah, you must be a lot stronger than you look. I, I didn't mean that. If, if he was murdered, well, well, it, it must have been by suffocation. And how could I have killed Matt? We were all together in camp at the time. His death could have been a genuine accident. So could the others. My husband and Arn. Arn was poisoned. I'm sure of that now. You can't prove that. The authorities will. All they have to do is dig him up and hold a post-mortem. Oh, all right. You win. Things didn't go quite as I'd hoped. You're admitted you killed him? <laughs> You'll find out the truth of that very soon. Meanwhile, what are you going to do with me? I'm going to tie your hands behind your back and stand guard over you till daylight. And then? And then I'm taking you into Pilgrim's Rest. I'll tell you something. You won't get there alive, I can promise you that. How do you mean by that? Wait and see, Tommy boy. You're not as clever as you think you are. Tommy pulled her out of the tent after sticking the two guns into his belt. Out in the flickering firelight, she suddenly turned and looked at him, her expression a mixture of arrogance and triumph. He took a length of rawhide and pulled her arms behind her, about to tie her wrists. A shadow moved out of the surrounding bush and leveled a rifle at them. Look over there, Tommy. It's the answer to all your problems. Stand still, Miller. Keep well, your hands where I can see them. Oh, darling, I'm glad you kept with an earshot. He knew that Tubby hadn't killed himself. Stay where you are, Martha. Don't come any closer. But, Matt, what... It seems you'll both have to die now. Matt, you... You can't be serious. We're in this together. There's more than enough for both of us. Sorry, Martha. But we love each other, Matt. I love that gold more. Besides, you'll never be able to keep your mouth shut now. Women can't. Now, keep back, I tell you. I'm beginning to see it all now. It's going to do you no good, Limey. Matt, you must listen to me. Oh, no, Matt. No, no. Ah! Ow! Ah! 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 Matt's bullet tore into Martha, and she went down. But Tommy dived into the shadows and undergrowth before the American could take aim. <laughs> Tommy had both guns in his hand. He waited, unable to see Matt. He waited in vain. As silently as he had appeared, Matt Ludlow faded into the surrounding bush. After what seemed like an hour, Tommy crawled out into the firelight, careful in case the American was waiting in ambush for him. When he considered it safe, Tommy went to Martha, who was sprawled out near her tent. She was still alive and groaning. Martha? 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 Martha
Where did he get you? The stomach. Oh. The spine. I never thought he... Keep you know. still. Keep still if you can. I'll take a look. I'll try, but... One look at her wound was enough to make up Tommy's mind. They would have to leave for Pilgrim's Rest right away and risk crossing the river. He saddled the one horse. What are you doing? We're leaving. <laughs> Matt could come back any time and catch us off guard. Tell me the truth, Tommy. Am I dying? Yes. Yes, you are. Even, even if we get to a doctor? I'm afraid so. I see. You're going to need me, though. Matt tells a long story about you to the commissioner. He'll be believed. He's known in Pilgrim's Rest. You're not. You'll need me alive to tell the truth. Who did the killings? Matt? We, we both killed my husband. That killed old Jock and Tubby. It was... Me, who poisoned Arne. The plan had been to keep you alive to testify that they were all natural or accidental. But when you realized that Tubby had been murdered, the plan went awry. And what about Matt? He was supposed to be dead, too. He'd have wandered on foot into Pilgrim's Rest to tell everybody how he'd been washed away by the, by the flood. And to walk back. And I'd suffer an accidental death later, eh? Probably. Sounds like a mad scheme to me. It nearly worked. Now, look, I'm going to lift you under my horse. It'll be painful. I'm ready. Right. There we go, then. Oh. Oh. There, now. You all right? Yeah, I think so. Now, just hold on tight while I climb up behind you. It was true. 
Martha Hendricks and her evil lover were dead. The gold commissioner was right. It did take a lot of explaining. But Tommy Miller was lucky, saved by Martha's dying confession. He was lucky in another way, too. The gold was his. And a few months later, he became one of the richest men in Pilgrim's Rest. Adventure is produced by Anne Freed and directed by Henry Diffenthal.